Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. There's a voice in the wilderness crying, prepare a highway for our God. Isaiah has in mind the Israelites' journey through the desert of Sinai after they were saved by God at the Red Sea. Like these first exiles, the people of Jerusalem will be revived and restored to life by the powerful, eternal word of God. There's a voice in the wilderness crying, prepare a highway for our God. In our Gospel, John the Baptist has been chosen by God to be a voice in the wilderness, to prepare a way for God to come into the lives of his people. For John, the Word of God is the Word made flesh in Jesus. John sets the stage for Jesus and warns the world to get ready for God to act in a way that is totally unexpected. There's a voice in the wilderness crying, prepare a highway for our God. We light this candle, the second candle of Advent, to remind us to remain hopeful that in the wilderness of life we can repent and receive the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ, the one who comes into our midst if we have eyes to see. There is a voice in the wilderness crying, prepare a highway for our God. The Lord be with you. And also, let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak compassionately to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her compulsory service has ended and their, that her penalty has been paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice is crying out, 
Clear the Lord's way in the desert. Make a level highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, and every mountain and hill will be flattened. Uneven ground will become level and rough terrain in a valley, a valley plain. The Lord's glory will appear, and all humanity will see it together. The Lord's mouth has commanded it. A voice was saying, call out. And, a, and another said, what should I call out? All flesh is grass. All its loyalty is like the flowers of the field. The grass dries up and the flower withers when the Lord's breath blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass dries up, the flower withers, but our God's word will exist forever. Go up on a high mountain, messenger Zion. Raise your voice and shout, messenger Jerusalem. Raise it, don't be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, here is our God. Here is the Lord God coming with strength, with a triumphant arm, bringing his reward with him and his payment before him. Like a shepherd, God will tend the flock. He will gather lambs in his arms and lift them onto his lap. He will gently guide the nursing ewes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm today is portions of Psalm 85. Let us say it uh, together. You have been gracious to your lamb, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the inequity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from the heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and he shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from Second Peter. Don't let it escape your notice, dear friends, that with the Lord a single day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a single day. The Lord isn't slow to keep his promise, as some think of slowness, but he is patient toward you, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to change their hearts and lives. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will pass away with a dreadful noise. The elements will be consumed by fire, and the earth and all the works done on it will be exposed. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be? You must live holy and godly lives, waiting for and hastening the coming day of, the Lord, of God. Because of that day, the heavens will be destroyed by fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But according to his promise, we are waiting for a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, Make every effort to be found by him in peace, pure and faultless. Consider the patience of our Lord to be salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look, I am sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. John was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I am coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. An Advent voice cries out. How do we hear it? What do we hear? It seems to me, at least given the lessons for this morning, that whatever we hear, it has to do with the wilderness. From Isaiah, a voice is crying out, clear the Lord's way in the desert, make a level highway in the wilderness for our God. And from Mark, my messenger will prepare your way, a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord and make his paths straight. The Advent voice calls us to go, clear the Lord's way in the wilderness, and the voice is already in the wilderness calling us there. <clears throat> Which summons will we answer? <clears throat> Which summons will we answer? That's my question this morning. Is the voice of Advent, the voice of God in this season of anticipation and preparation, calling us to level the wilderness so that God may move through it more easily? Or is the voice of Advent calling us into the wilderness? be changed. And so I invite you to join with me in entering wilderness this morning. <clears throat> I, for one, love my time in the wilderness. And in Colorado, that primarily means the mountains. We are blessed here to have 44 areas designated as wilderness special places where nature still calls the shots, according to the Forest Service, which goes on to say places where people can find a sense of true self-reliance and experience solitude. They are the final holdout refuges for a long list of rare, threatened, and endangered species, forced to the edges by modern development. They are the headwaters of critical life-infusing rivers and streams. They are places where wildness is retained. For many of us, at least for me, there are places we go to see creation as it was in the beginning. They are places we go intentionally to be renewed, refreshed, changed. But that wasn't quite the case for the Israelites. As described in Harper's Bible Dictionary, a wilderness was a place that was desolate and desert, and that was beyond the limits of settlement and therefore government control. It was perceived by both city dwellers and villagers as being essentially disorderly and dangerous, the home of wild beasts and savage wandering tribes. Wilderness could be desert or 
scrubby wasteland, but also forested places. And as we heard this morning, it could even include water, the Jordan River. And so wilderness for the Israelites, at least, wasn't an inviting place. On the contrary, it was a place where one went reluctantly, trading one danger for another. Hagar, the Egyptian maidservant who bore Ishmael to Abraham, fled twice into the wilderness to escape the wrath of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Moses, after killing an Egyptian, fled to Midian and while there tended flocks in the desert. Elijah fled from Queen Jezebel to the wilderness of Horeb. And of course, the big story of escape is the Exodus event. Israel's fleeing Egypt into the wilderness of Sinai. That experience turned into a hated memory, a vast and terrifying desert of poisonous snakes and scorpions, of cracked ground with no water, according to Deuteronomy. Those sojourns in the wilderness, however, weren't without benefit. That is, an encounter with God or an angel. Each time Hagar fled Abraham's household, a messenger, an angel of God appeared to her and assured her that not only would she survive, but that her son would be the father of a great nation. It was in the desert, of course, where Moses encountered the burning bush, encountered God, who gave Moses not only God's name, I am who I am, but also commissioned Moses to bring God's people out of Egypt. It was in the wilderness where Elijah encountered God in the still, small voice that told Elijah to return to work, to anoint a king as well as his successor, Elisha. And of course, that hated memory of the wilderness of Sinai was the same wilderness where Israel became God's covenanted people. The ancients didn't enter the wilderness willingly, as I or we most often do. Their time in the wilderness, however, did result in renewal. As I mentioned, the harsh resonances of wilderness are suggested in our readings this morning. While it's difficult to hear Isaiah 40 without getting sidetracked by the great tenor solo in Handel's Messiah, Comfort, Comfort Ye My People, one of the significant features of this passage is the notion that in order for that comfort to be realized, a way needs to be made in the wilderness. Isaiah's audience, as well as later readers, would have understood this to be a reference to a royal road, a, very, a, a way devoid of obstacles, perhaps even made plain with paving stones. The uncivilized, disorderly, dangerous wilderness was to be made passable so that God could lead the Israelites out of their captivity in Babylon. The entry into and change to the wilderness was to be external. The language or image of a voice crying out in wilderness is picked up by Mark, but the evangelist doesn't quote Isaiah exactly. Instead of Isaiah's a voice is crying out, clear the Lord's way in the desert, make a level highway in the wilderness for our God, Mark writes that the messenger in the wilderness, the messenger is in the wilderness, a voice shouting, prepare the way for the Lord, make his paths straight. That is, in Isaiah, the voice is demanding that the way be prepared in the wilderness. In Mark, the one shouting is in the wilderness. That is, John the Baptist summoning others intentionally to join him there and then to be changed internally. Advent is that time in the liturgical year where we anticipate when we prepare for the entry of God into our world in a tangible way. That preparation, I believe, might happen in several, even overlapping ways, ways in which we are invited to participate. First, with Isaiah, I have to wonder, and I encourage you to wonder, where are the metaphorical wildernesses in our world? Where is the Advent voice urging us to clear the way, to make a level highway for God? The wildernesses around us are hard to see, homelessness, caustic civil discourse, 
increased loneliness, the list goes on. I hear this voice charging us to look beyond ourselves to, at these places of desolation. What are the barriers that prevent others from experiencing the fullness of life that God would have for them? The Advent voice asks, how do we make those rough places plain? John the Baptist, on the other hand, stands in the wilderness, calling us to come away from civilization and to address the wilderness rough places in our own lives. What prevents us from experiencing the fullness of life that God would have for us? Is it workaholism? Is it social convention? Is it pride? As one commentator put it, in the wilderness we exchange pride for humility. Therein is the chance to be renewed. The Advent voice announce, summons people to be changed so that the one who is coming, who is stronger than John, will find a place prepared. How do we hear the Advent voice? Where might I find renewal? How am I called to repair the way for the Lord? Which will it be? The call to change the wilderness around me? Or a call to change the wilderness within me? Is it either or? Or is it both and? Amen. Amen. Please rise and let us continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he has seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to the Lord to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we heed the call to prepare the way of the Lord, let us prepare our hearts in prayer, saying, Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for those who work to prepare the way of the Lord, especially those in the church. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, for our Bishop Kim, for our parish clergy, Father Gary and Deacon Nadine, and our lay leaders, for all those who serve God's people. May your church strive to be a vessel of peace, O God, and hear our prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for our President Joseph, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, and for our Governor Jared. We pray for all those in position of power, that they may seek to work for justice and peace in every place. Leveling mountains of fear and raising valleys of hopelessness, that your will may be known on earth. May you guide and govern us, O God, and hear our prayer. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. We pray for na nations torn by war, strife, and violence. We pray for all those in harm's way. 
We pray for those who hunger and those who suffer for the sake of conscience. We pray for those who seek refuge far from home. May they find consolation and strength in the face of your son, Jesus, O God, and hear our prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for all those who struggle and suffer. We pray for the poor, the sick, the oppressed, and those in prison. We pray for all victims of violent crimes and their families. We pray for those who mourn and those who have known bitterness. We pray for all those with any need whom we now name silently or aloud. Shine the light of your Christ into our broken world, O God, and hear our prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for this community of faith that like John the baptizer, we may hear witness that God is coming into the work in our lives. Give us hope and strength, O God, and hear our prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. We praise you for the manifold gifts of our lives. We give thanks for all the blessings of our lives, including those we now name. We pray that you may fill us with your grace, that we may be truly thankful, O God, and hear our prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for those who have died. We pray that we may join with them, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed John the Baptizer, and all the saints in the fellowship of the Church Triumphant. O God, hear our prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <coughs> Let's merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, now have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Glad that you are here and that you are here in this space. If you are here in this space after the service, I invite you to go into the parish hall for some refreshments, some leftovers from the party yesterday at our house. <laughs> so, and, and to those of you who came to that, thank you so much. It was it was a, it was a fun time. Um, a, a couple of announcements, reminder about how we do communion. If you are uh, accustomed to receiving communion in your own congregation, you're welcome here. We serve it in both bread and wine. Um, and we have gluten-free options available. Just let me know if that's what you would like. Um, the bread can be dipped in the wine or you can take the full chalice. So just know that. Um, the only other, well, no, there are a couple more announcements. Uh, Faith Forum will continue. We'll be looking at um, about five Christmas carols um, today um, and the background and sort of the commentary on them, and all that sort of thing. Connie's giving me the Christmas carol stare. <laughs> We're not singing them. Uh, we're, 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 we're preparing to enter into them more joyfully. That's what we're doing. Uh, 
Also, um, in, the, in the parish hall, when you go in for uh, refreshments, the angel tree is still there. There are still angels on the angel tree, so pick up an angel. Um, and the, therefore, um, gift cards, I think, that we're going to take to, um, to Walnut Hills. And Nadine has something else to say about it. And also, after the service in the parish hall, is a um, assembly line set up. And if you would like to join me, I guess at this point, but several people, um, being an elf to prepare little packets that we put together each year for the folks at St. Clair's. It's a stocking cap of several little items that we tie together. And we hand those out because our week um, to serve at St. Clair's is always Christmas week. So that's what we do that. So join me if you'd like. Thank you. Birthday is yes, you got twenty first. The carol sing on the twenty first. Yes, yes. <laughs> Reading the sign language from over here. The carol sing twenty first, uh, six o'clock in the parish hall. Come dressed festively with your best voice or whichever one you have, and, and be prepared to sing uh, Christmas carols. Not in church, but in church. Sort of. Anyway, uh, the ongoing joke about Christmas carols and Advent. Are there birthdays and anniversaries to celebrate this morning? No. Then let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor unto the Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord. <laughs> and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when they had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, death we, we proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection. We, we await his, his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Nan Berenger will be taking communion to Helen Romano. In the name of God, we send you forth to share communion with those who are absent from this table. As you have been fed, now feed others in Christ's name. Our prayers are with you. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.